Let's go back in time, to the year 1945. The Second World War, is ending. This German submarine, returns to its protected base, in saint Nazaire in occupied France. We are here, to find out what has been the transformation, applied to the design of submarines, from the end of the 20th century, to the present day. For this, we have selected nine submarines, which represent this evolution. But before we start, let's remember something about the hull, or rather, the hulls that are used in the design of submarines. In the series entitled The Submarine, we learned that, in the construction of a submarine, one or two hulls can be used. Russian and Chinese submarines, usually, use the design of the two hulls, while in the West, designs with a single hull, although reinforced, are usually used. Let's compare, two modern nuclear submarines. Above, we have a Russian November class, SSN, with a double hull. And below, we have a Virginia class, SSN, with a single hull, although, with parts reinforced by a second hull, dark blue color. This was, the design of the American double-hulled 1911E-class class submarines. They were designed to navigate on the surface, so, they were bad when immersed and, therefore, generated a lot of noise. They were among the first submarines, to have torpedo tubes on the sides of the bow. They also incorporated the bow planes, to have greater precision in depth control. The two large flooded tanks, can be seen on both sides, of the longitudinal axis of the submarine. During the First World War, they were used mainly as reconnaissance, and coastal defense ships. To date, it is the submarine family with the largest number of ships built in the world, more than 700 units. We can see, on the sides, the main water tanks, for immersion tasks. In this image, inside, we see the design of the double hull. Being submarines, of more than 60 meters in length, they had two levels or floors. They housed, the command and combat areas, propulsion and electrical systems, a torpedo room, and accommodation areas for the crew. These submarines, were the precursors of the true submarine warfare, with the aforementioned tactical of Wolf Pack. This was the design, of the submarines used by the United States Navy, during World War II. They were, the first submarines designed to act as part of the main fleet they supported. They still had, in their design, the two side tanks attached to the main navigation hull. They were submarines, with an enormous torpedo attack capacity, as they had six tubes at the bow, and another four more at the stern. It is considered, the prototype of the current submarines. It was the first submarine to apply true hydrodynamic techniques, in the design of the outer hull. The external tanks were eliminated, as we see on the screen, so excellent navigation qualities, were achieved. By increasing the capacity of its batteries, it could sail submerged for up to three days, instead of the usual 24 hours at the time. The snorkel design, was significantly improved requiring only five hours to return to full immersion navigation. This was the interior design, of the German 21 Type S submarine. Let's notice, the enormous space occupied by the batteries, in the lower center part of the submarine. 
and as a curiosity, the stern torpedoes were eliminated, and only the bow tubes were kept. This form of design is known as teardrop or spindle shaped and continues to this day. After World War II, the United States Navy began a modernization of its fleet. To achieve this, all the concepts used by the Germans in their Type XXI class submarines are applied. Under the Guppy concept, the Bellotto class submersibles were upgraded. As we can see, from its interior design, torpedo tubes had been repositioned, both fore and aft. The hull thickness was increased, providing the additional weight needed to increase dive depth and speed. For each of its two propellers, it had its own electric propulsion motor and two diesel engines. And so we come to the year 1954, in which the world's first nuclear submarine was designed. By having nuclear propulsion, it would no longer have technical limitations, in the time it could remain submerged. This limit, would only be imposed by the resistance of its crew, and the supply capacity that the submarine could store. The hub design, came from the German type XXI, which did not allow it to fulfill the promise of, having been able to sail, at more, than 30 knots. As we can see, the bow was more robust, and the entire upper part of the hull and tower or sail, was reinforced. In 1957, he was able to complete the 20,000 leagues, 60,000 nautical miles, or 110,000 kilometers, of Captain Nemo's, Jules Verne submarine journey. And in 1958, this submarine, became the first to sail under the polar cap of the North Pole. It was the world's first ballistic missile, a nuclear-powered submarine. Let us remember that, this so-called Cold War, was in full swing, so these underwater ballistic platforms, were considered strategic weapons. The design, of the new Polaris A1 ICBMs, made it necessary to modify the original hull. These ballistic missiles, had a range of up to 2,550 kilometers, carrying a single nuclear warhead. We see in its design, the superstructure added in its upper part, to accommodate the cells of said missiles. They are submarines with three levels or floors, where we can see that, they only have the bow torpedo room. Curiously, each ballistic submarine has two full crews. They are called blue and gold, and each has its own full complement of officers, NCOs, and sailors. In this way, the active duty time of the ballistic submarine, is maximized. The Typhoon class, NATO, or Oculo class, Russia code, continues to be the biggest and largest nuclear submarine in the world. There is only one active unit left, which is used for tests, and which causes a drop in 2022. There were many new features incorporated, although with different efficiency results. Let's start with the five main ore pressure hulls, which were inside the outer lightweight hull. It had two internal pressure hulls, as we see in this image of the shipyard, where these ships are being scrapped. These two hulls, were joined by a third pressure hull, 
located on the two previous ones, all of them being interconnected. These three main holes had a diameter of 7 meters each one. In addition, it had two other smaller inner pressure holes for the torpedoes in the navigation room. This design, with five internal hulls, was made in order to have the highest degree of survival of the submarine. As the five main hulls were made of titanium, their cost was enormous. Before the fall of the Soviet Union, the Akula program was cancelled. Unlike the American submarines, the Russian Typhoon class carried two nuclear reactors. It was, also, the submarine with the highest number of ballistic missiles on board, SLBM, as it had 20 vertical launch systems. A final innovation was, the location of the trawl sonar, housed in the raised aft tail. And let's finish, the story of the evolution of the hull design of submarines, with a modern conventional submarine. This attack submarine, is the result of collaboration between two of the three largest shipbuilding companies in Europe. These are, the Spanish Navancha, and the French Naval Group. The shape of its hull, represents the typical design of modern conventional submarines, cigar-shaped. This spherical design to the bow, allows high maneuverability and speed when sailing submerged, although not as high, when sailing on the surface. They have a single hull, specially reinforced at the bow and stern, by a second more hydrodynamic hull. They are low-cost designs, but equipped with a very high automation of all their systems both weapons and communications. This allows for a minimum crew of only 32 people. To finish and as a summary, let's see the nine submarines selected for this tour in the submarine as design. And remember that, the date that appears, for each submarine, corresponds to the year in which it first entered service.